Okay, Lonnie told me I should watch this and that it would be good. Okay. This should be good. Trans versus conservative men. Is masculinity disappearing in America? Can I just say, the most manly men I know are all trans men. Because they spend literally all their time and effort, not all of it, but a lot of time and effort, much more than cis men do, into being manly and manlike. And so they tend to be the most ma manly men I know. Uh, at least, uh, you know, you don't meet a lot of trans dudes, but, you know, as far as I'm aware, tends to be the uh, the the consistent tendency. What I'd like to see is, because I know Buck Angel is in this, I hope it's like Buck Angel versus some like noodle arm five foot two like conservative dude. I really hope that's the lineup. That would be hysterical. By the way, Buck Angel is a dumb fuck politically on a lot of stuff, but he's a boomer. I can't really blame him on some things. Uh, though I do condemn a lot of his opinions. Uh, he does have some pretty, uh, pretty, pretty based moments sometimes. I'm sure here he might, he might, uh, be based, but, uh, doesn't mean that he's not cringe on other things, okay? So let's watch. Social experiment that brings humans with opposing beliefs together. These discussions may contain viewpoints that are the result of misinformation. Remember to seek out experts and to be critical of your own biases while forming an opinion. Oh, I like that. humanity in each participant, and as always, we encourage empathy. I like that. That's a cool little thingy. When you say we're just redefining what being a man is, you have to understand you're redefining a fabric in society that has kept the human race oh my God, I was right. to where it is today. But do you see the state of our world today? It's not perfect, and it's been led by men. Like Holy shit, I was right. Can we can we see the lineup? That we got Buck right there. We got this dude who looks like a skater dude. We got a guy there in flannel, and like the conservative guys. The we got this fucking. This guy looks like he's a wax figure. I'm sorry. This guy looks like he's made of wax. Have you ever seen a, a wax figure of a person before in real life? Because that's what this guy looks like. He looks like a synth from like a alien. You know the you know the synths? Yeah, he looks like one of those. Like if I cut him, his blood will be white. You are trespassing in a restricted area. Like an alien isolation or whatever. He looks like one of those. He's got crazy eyes. He looks like he... He looks like he, he's trying to get that mouth on something right now. He's trying to get that mouth on something. Human race and got it to where it is today. But do you see the state of our world today? What? I, I assume I assume these are all the trans dudes, right? Like, I'm sorry, but we got this little shrimp right here in a suit. We got this little fucking smooth boy right here. We got Seth Rogen 20 years ago, and we got one big burly guy. And on the left side, we got big burly guy, big burly guy, like nor like normal looking dude, kind of skater boy looking dude. They unironically did the more manly lineup or the trans dudes. Like if I gave you this lineup here and you didn't know who all these people are, I actually think most people would assume these were the trans dudes, like just from this angle. May OK, maybe not this guy kind of. This guy kind of has like an aesthetic going on that conservative guys wouldn't dress like. Like like put this guy in like flannel or like a leather jacket and you you're you know. But like and take this guy out of the suit and this guy out of the fucking polo shirt so you don't know they're obviously conservative and I would pin these guys as the trans dudes. <laughs> um like I said, trans guys are more ma manly than cis men 90% of the time. It's not perfect, and it's been led by men like throughout all of history, and look where it's gone. Actually, in this case, 75% of the time, to be quite more specific. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Masculinity is disappearing in America. No. What's that even mean? Can you even I define think that, that? Masculinity is disappearing. I think that it's a conservative effort to emasculate men. Um, I think that some people feel threatened by masculinity and, and the. Uh, Can you even define that? Oh, carry. is that Brand? Is that Brandon Tatum? That's Brandon Tatum, isn't it? I I thought he looked familiar. He looks different under this lighting. He looks different under this lighting. The officer Tatum, I think, is it's, his name's Brandon here, but I think his name's Brandon Tatum. I've I've only watched one of his videos before. I thought he looked familiar, but I've only seen him once. Long time ago, I covered him like back when I first moved to Flor uh, to California. Am I right? Is this him? I hope I'm not having a case of mistaken identity here. I've only covered the guy once, so I might be in the wrong uh, on who I think it's him. Okay, you say so. Themselves, um, leading families and different things like that. So I think that there's an effort to mitigate uh, strong men in America. There's a few different ways to think about masculinity, but just looking at kind of the definition of the term. Okay, 
what masculinity is is highly subjective okay if we're talking about different cultures and different like time periods we're talking very different conceptions okay though if we're talking is masculinity disappearing in america we'll be more specific i would argue that masculinity if anything has become hyper escalated in america hookup culture the uh, uh, prevalence of uh, man, like men, manly associated brand ba branding, gyms, uh, clothing, uh, uh, body wash, even, uh, uh, you know, just a anything that's like for uh, hygiene, highly, highly gendered. Um, just like it seems like if anything, capitalism, especially in the um, uh, uh, the growing prevalence of technology has only led to masculine and feminine fe like aspects of society getting more exemplified now has what we see as masculinity gotten a little bit more different do we allow women now to work instead of just being forced to stay in the house you know barefoot cooking pies all day and pumping out babies out of their cooter i i really couldn't think of a of another word like obviously we don't do that anymore or we try not to or we give the option not to because you know we 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 we, we don't want to go yeah, we're not grugs. We don't go and bonk a woman on the head and drag her back into the into the snoo snoo cave and like have our way with her. You know, like we we we've, we've we've gotten past that in society. What it is to be a strong, good man has changed, and I'd argue it's changed for the better. You need to make a case for one: has it changed for the worst? And two: you have to make a case for is that change bad to begin with? Is the effect that change is having bad? Because there's those are two different arguments, believe it or not. Fifty years ago, you had you know, people like John Wayne, you had Martin Luther King, you had Sean Connery. You know, you think oh, of you, you don't have John Wick and fucking Mad Max now. Like, what are you talking about? People just be like, oh, nowadays you don't have list of old uh, action movie heroes, and it's like John Wick is one of the most successful franchises right now in like the action genre, and it started in 2014, post GamerGate. And the main character, the main character of John Wick is played by an actor who is quite openly progressive. I, I, I don't know, like, no, John Wick. I bring up John Wick as an example because they're bringing up, like, pop culture examples. So I'm bringing up pop culture examples, too, just to point out how stupid their argument is. Of, like, masculine features as in the beards, hairy chest, big muscles, think stoic, being brave, being rugged, being a provider. Today you have, you know, people like Harry Styles and, and Timothy Chalamet, and you have people that are completely contrary to what we were looking at back then, and those values of those masculine characteristics are, are completely valued. I do believe that, that guy's going to look identical to Seth Rogen in 20 years. That masculinity is going downhill. Maybe less. Look at like, um, the testosterone levels. Now that do they need to label this guy as a conservative man? He's wearing a suit, okay? This kid got shoved in lockers every day at school because he wore a suit, a suit to school, okay? This kid hasn't touched a vagina yet, not except for the one he came out of. And he honestly, head that big, he was probably a fucking C-section. Testosterone levels for guys is going down um, compared to generations before us. So yeah, I uh, agree. Hi, I'm Gilbert. I'm 24 years old and I'm a conservative man. With my beliefs and having a trans man as my friend, we don't really talk about politics. Someone oh, being trans oh. doesn't make me like them any less of a person. As far as pronouns, um, when referring to my friend, I don't really use the pronouns that my friend would want. I just say my friend or I say their name uh just because i feel like i'm getting you know listen all right i have a black best friend i'm not racist okay i promise i'm not racist i have a black best friend okay and we're really good friends now i don't he, he you know he asked me to not say the n-word and i continue to say it anyway um because you know we have our own political differences but you know we're, we're still friends you know he'd probably prefer i don't say the n-word but you know it's okay <laughs> That is basically what I feel like he's saying right now. Am I crazy or nah? Giving into the narrative that men can be women and women can be men if I use the pronouns that they want. Jesus. I do see that masculinity is under attack completely, but my definition of masculinity, like you said, has a lot to do with the traits that are associated God, with it. God, he really game. is I, a, I mean, a, of all of us, you know, I mean, I'm not the most masculine man, wax. but I do think that the good aspects of masculinity are definitely under attack, but Figure. I don't think that it's disappearing, it's just being channeled in different ways. It depends on how you look at it, it because a lot of the traits can also be embodied in, well, in, in, in femininity. So when we look at masculinity, I think that 
that we have to also look at what is the actual definition of femininity and masculinity. And if we're, if we're defining masculinity by being stoic or muscles or body parts, then um, is it really masculinity? A lot of times when you guys talk about masculinity, you associate it with men being manly, but I think more women are embracing their masculinity. Masculinity is still there. I mean, just other genders are using it. Being courageous, being powerful, more women are standing They're in They're doing power, a good job. Which is again associated with masculine, but it's not specific to just men. Women are no longer submissive. They're dominant. Women don't need men. And I think Buck that Angel most hasn't said realizing shit. that anyone can be powerful on their own. I believe that the masculine traits are inherently in men and men have to take a position. You made a really good point by saying women are now becoming more masculine and they feel as if they don't need men, which I think is the problem here. Um, I think that the way we've been designed by God, in my opinion, is that men are to lead, men are to be strong, men are to be brave. Men have to take their rightful position. The way our country has been um, structured to this point have been because of strong men who have taken a stand, who have fought wars. Now I feel like it's getting so lopsided that our families are degrading People don't know where they're at in this country. Now in 2022, masculinity is being redefined. And I think what happens is people get upset when things start to change. No, okay. I think that nobody ever wants to take that away from men. I think that what we want to do in the world now is start to understand what is masculinity. And it's always been really associated with this very machismo space. And now there's different kinds of men in the world. There's not just biological men. There's also trans men or people who, def who want to be masculine. So he's, he's really trying though. Like he drops the biological men and you know, like his takes, but he's trying here. Like, Buck Angel is legitimately somebody who has spent his whole life pushing the trans like movement forward. The issue is he's like 80 or something. And so he's got some really, uh, really cringe boomer takes uh, that just don't don't vibe well with the hippin' and hoppin' trans zoomers that here in my audience and whatnot. The movement's kind of surpassed him to an extent, you know? He's reached a point in his life and society's reached a point where he feels almost as though most of the hard work is done, you know? He's seen so much change in his life that he feels as though the the young people coming along and making as much of a stink as, you know, he did back in the day, they don't know how good they have it, you know? It's sort of like a, ah, get off my lawn kind of mentality. But, you know, I mean... On basic ideas like this, it seems like his heart is in the right place. I've never had a sus suspicion that it wasn't. Hey, Cherry. I think segment. what's happening now is people are pushing against change because change is scary and people don't understand. And so I think men, biological men, feel under attack when I think that's not what's happening here. The point that you made is 100% is, is correct. There are different phases and people are experiencing in different ways. The feminist movement is, I think they are attacking masculinity within men. Oh, I, I don't God. want a man to open the door for me. I don't need a man in my life. I can do all these different what? things. What they are doing wait, is attacking. wait. How does feminism, he, even the examples he listed, God, he is so stupid. God, I want to debate him. Oh, please. Oh, I'd love to debate him. You guys have to spam his comment section and ask him to debate me on something. Uh, anything, like fucking BLM, race issues, trans stuff, anything. I'll do it. Feminism, I don't care. Just get him to debate me on something like that. Good Lord. I mean, and that's what's causing the problem. What part of the feminist group feels like it's attacking? Because I know that most feminism is like wanting equal pay or... Well, you just said that women not needing men. Like, no, none of the examples he listed were were pe were like ways that, that men are being harmed. It's like women doing their own thing. If, if anything, it's women going their own way. That'd be a good way to describe feminism. Only it's like actually them going their own way, but also kind of helping men. You know, you'll hear conservative guys shit on feminism nonstop, and they'll use like... For example, male suicide statistics as like an example of, uh, you know, how bad men have it. And yet when feminism tries to target the issues in our society that cause that problem, then they have a problem with it. It's somehow empowering, you know, having a man is somehow. Yeah, uh, male suicide is caused by women not letting them open doors though, Xander Hall, didn't you know? Like, to an extent that happens, like, but it's not as common as, like, it's made out to be, you know? Like, the, I imagine you're being sarcastic, but, like, you know, there there are, there are, like, issues where, like, you'll see, like, a woman post on Twitter, like, oh, if a man cries in front of me, my pussy dries up like a desert, and it's like, did you really have, like, it's okay to have that opinion, but did you have to tweet it, you know? Because, like, even though I know that girl's a bitch, I'm, it still reinforces my, like, I'm never going to cry in front of a woman type of thing right uh certainly just not going to cry in front of anybody but certainly not like a woman you know it's sort of it, it contributes to that and that is a thing that happens but you know it's more or less standards set by men that shame men into not you know being willing to express their emotions you know i only feel cool talking about my emotions with dudes that i'm friends with who've done it with me because i know they're cool with that because god knows like 
if I went to like my super macho friend who doesn't talk about like his problems or emotions and like start trauma dumping on him or whatever. And he's like, OK, this is a little heavy for me. Like, I don't want to feel like a, sh a piece of shit after that, you know? less empowering or being an individual is somehow but less that's empowering. how women feel right. women actually are saying that because that's how they feel it's but that's if, not how every woman feels but that, no one's saying every woman they're only saying women do feel that way so right. all of you are going to have different opinions as biological men Absolutely. women all have different opinions oh you see a very specific group of women but, saying this. let me just you just you did just say that's how women feel so are you speaking on behalf of all no no, no i know i'm not let me take that back so, the women who are saying that feel that way why do you feel that women in general feel disempowered. No, I don't think in general. No, no, no. That's a generalized statement. I can't, you can't say that. I said the women, no, I did not. I said the women who say that. You associated somehow. Hey, as a perfect example of conservative rhetoric right there, Buck Angel misspoke, went back and said, sorry, I didn't mean women. I meant women that are saying this, which should have been obvious by context clues, but you know, get the, get the clarification out of the way for the audience and for everyone involved. Sure. But then they continue to hone in on and say, but you said women. He's like, no, I, I just said I didn't mean women. I, I meant the women saying this. That That is conservative arguing. Gish galloping at its finest. It's not gish galloping. I, I, I mean, I don't even know if it's a named fallacy or, or a named slimy argument tactic as far as I know. I think it's just sort of a dickish thing to do. Women are now embracing masculinity, which means that they are now more empowered because they don't feel a man. Or, right. yeah, women man yeah. women but I don't think that women are empowered from having a man or not having a man. So why is it always associated that uh, you know a woman's now empowered because she doesn't need a man? A, a woman has always been empowered. Women have never been, but they never felt that's that. That's not true. I mean, if we true. go back to the 1920s, if you're going to do that, but that's not true. I hate this. Talking about society right now. I right? hate this. I hate this. I hate this. The real argument is empowerment is subjective. We leave it up to those individuals who feel disempowered to seek empowerment themselves as long as it doesn't infringe on the rights of others. The women that are, you know, fighting for feminist causes, they themselves have decided as individuals to join a broader cause of like-minded people because they feel a shared, you know, lack of empowerment. Not every woman feels that way. That's obvious, but many do. That would be the argument I'd make there, and they would have no response. There is simply no Welcome response to, to what I just said. It is objectively true, and anyone who tries to argue against that is would look crazy. Chauncey Extreme, thanks for the tier one sub. I appreciate that, homie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, you actually think women are empowered right now? Absolutely, women are empowered. He's the vice president. And how long uh, did it take for her to become vice president? I hate this argument. There is a right and wrong way to be a man. Obviously Take a second to think about it. Wow. Oh, of course. Uh, I think that of course. when I originally heard the question being asked, I didn't agree with it. But men are not abusive individuals. Right. Men are not to be cowards. Right. Men are to lead their families. And men who do not display that, I don't believe. Listen, that. there are no neg bad. There, there are no bad or good men. There are no negative traits about men or negative traits about women. There are only bad traits about people, bad people and negative traits about people who happen to be men or women. OK, that's how it works. They are men, in my opinion. And all of the qualities that I see in my father to is say, what I believe a man should be. All of his characteristics are what make a man. To say a characteristic or quality is that of men or that of a group, it is a, a very broad statement. And, it, and if it doesn't apply to everybody, then your statement is almost by default not very strong. It's not very sound. And when I see a man be a coward in the truth, in, in, in just speaking the truth, or um, sticking up for what's right, especially today in America with everything going on, I'm like, those are not men. My name is Clarkson, I'm 24 years old, and I'm a conservative man. My biggest question for the other side really is, are you happy? Anybody that wants to fundamentally change society yeah. and change gender roles, to me, that, that's not happiness. And if, if we want to fight for acceptance, we need to start with acceptance, which is accepting society for what it is. Dude, I feel like this guy is like, he's got like the gay version of Get Out going on, you know? Like if I pull out the... Uh... Like if I pull out my phone and start blinking the camera at him, he'll snap out of it. That was a meme and a little close to the sun here, aren't we, chat? Listen, okay, all my black viewers laughed. At the end of the day, we're all men, and I don't believe there's any, any wrong way to be a man. We're just redefining what it means to be a man. But there are things that naturally come to men. So when you say we're just redefining what being a man is, you have to understand you're redefining a fabric in society that has kept the human race and got it to where it is today. So just like aimlessly throwing out, oh, well, we're just redefining what it is to be a man. That's not just like a light subject that we should be talking about. But, but why do we have to say the same? Yeah. Why do we need to have the same thing for hundreds, hundreds of years? Do you not see the state of... It's not the of, same thing. It's just it's it's keeping the same qualities. But do you see the state of our world today? It's not perfect. It's, this person it's believes the earth is 7,000 like, years old. all history. And look where it's gone. So. You're, you know, we're talking about redesigning what it means to be a man. So what do you want to bring to traditional men? I think it's embracing that you can be vulnerable. I think that a lot of men want to portray strength, strength, strength. But men are people, and I know that men have feelings. Being a man and masculine. Listen, I say this as a lefty guy myself. I actively seek out ways to portray more strength. Because, you know, like it or not, regardless of the social spaces I exist in, 
broader society does feature does value these things. There's a reason why men who go to the gym and get ripped are by default more sexually valued, okay? Our society in every way rewards being a conventionally conventionally attractive man or woman, particularly if you're a tall conventionally attractive man. Society benefits you in every way. I don't know why conservatives feel the need to like deny this when at the same time they'll like turn around and say attractive women have it easy on Twitch and YouTube and it's like yeah yeah they do have it easy on Twitch and YouTube just like tall attractive men have it easy in like fields that have much more effect on the world that aren't niche like Twitch streaming or YouTube and they'll be like no 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 that's just because of uh, random other things we don't need to worry about we don't need to acknowledge those factors we don't need to acknowledge those socioeconomic factors around why uh, women don't generally pursue STEM fields as much. It's so annoying. It's so much backward. It's it's so many circles. I, I I get tired of arguing against the same points over and over again. But I will admit, when you argue against the same points over and over and over and over again, and they never really change that much, except for aesthetically, you get really good at arguing against them. It's really easy to practice. Those are two different things, and I believe that we can redefine whatever that means to anybody by including other types of men or other types of masculinity. I myself am a father, I have a child. Some people would disagree with me being a father because I am transgender. But that being said, I present to the world as male, my child sees me as a man. There's proper ways to be vulnerable, right? You don't have to break down in front of he your family. He said a okay, transgender. Well. Strong men, I believe, exude the qualities that you guys are referring to. I think the problem is overcorrection, right? Some people believe that men need to cry and lay on the ground and be feminine like women. My name is Brandon, I'm 34 years old and I'm a conservative man. I had a lot of curiosities about what it's like to be a person who believes that they're a trans man. You know, I feel like God has created all of us very uniquely. Oh, and God. although I have beliefs and I follow the Bible to the T, I still want to know from other Listen, people. Listen, I said this to Lonnie this morning. Let me, let me make my position on religion entirely clear, okay? If I saw a ghost or anything like that, like just definitively something that is just unexplainable along those lines, like a ghost or a demon or like a fucking skinwalker or a wendigo or some shit i'm going to church the very next day okay because i'm immediately assuming oh if that's real then everything else is okay yep okay especially if it's ghosts if ghosts are real then souls are real which kind of implies that like maybe christianity is right I, listen that is my that is my position all right i'm not risking it all right if i end up seeing a fucking ghost and it's real like it's definitely real and it's not like a psychotic break or anything. I'm just, I'm going to church and I'm like, yeah, okay, all right. Looks like they were right. Fuck, they got me. I stand corrected. People, what their experiences are. Doesn't mean I have to agree, but I really want to know what other people are feeling from the person who's experiencing it in real time. Pascal's wager, I yep. have male privilege. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I live both lives, and I can tell you firsthand that it does exist. I am taken much more seriously in my career oh since I transitioned as a man. Prior to transitioning, I would work Buck. just as hard if not harder for the same position and not be considered. The Buck the I am Back with the cringe seriously. takes again. Example, obviously, with COVID, there's like the mask mandate, right? So I have to tell customers all the time, I need to be up your nose, right? All day. My manager who's above me, who is a woman, will have to go to them, tell them they give her a fight. But the minute I just look in their direction, it's up. It doesn't seem like a privilege, but it is because now my manager has to work three times harder for something that's so simple. I think the word privilege is the thing that turns a lot of people off with this conversation. But that being said, again, myself living my life as a female, pretty much half my life, and then now half my life as a man. There is no way I could not be honest about the fact that my life has changed drastically, also being a white man. That's also a conversation a lot of people don't want to have. But I have privilege of being white and privilege also of being a man now. I can walk into any room and command Wait, that room Bucks in a having, because people Bucks just having the good take, never mind. The thing is that Wait, Bucks having the good take. Space, so they'll never ever see it. Why do we now, as women who have become men, get to have this thing? It's 100% because we are men. We look like men. Nobody would ever know. No one would ever know no. that we used to be women. So, so it's actually a real lived experience. Based. So, Never I mind. I'm sorry I called him Buck the Cuck. Now I feel bad. Though he did get cucked by, I believe, Lana Wachowski. With a lot of what you all are saying as far as like transitioning. Um, but as a black man, privilege looks way different for me because if I'm walking down the street, then I'm seen as a threat by police, by women, by anybody else. Being seen as a man is where my privilege stops and where everything else begins. So I don't see it as privilege. Okay, I, I got a lot to say about this topic here. <laughs> oh, first God, of all, I, mean, I know you do. We have honest with each other. You know, I think that not everybody on this side presents 100% like a man. Like if I, if I saw you in the streets, I wouldn't think you were a man. You know, men have it really hard in this world. Bull fucking shit. Are you fucking serious? If I saw you in the street, I wouldn't think you were a man. Are you fucking serious? If you saw these guys walking down the street, you would immediately go, hmm. Nah, that's not a dude. You'd immediately assume trans? Really? You'd immediately assume trans man. 
I'm a lefty, and I've pro and I've never seen a trans guy in real life, and I'm and I'm certain that I have. I just didn't know. Okay, you aren't out here clocking trans dudes rocking beards and a six pack. Okay, relax, buddy. Relax. Presents 100% like a man. Like if I if I saw you in the streets, I wouldn't be. Here. You know, men have it really hard in this world, and they've always had it hard in this world. The wars have been fought by men. They've Listen, chat. I'm going to be honest with all of you. I think I'm going to have to pull a destiny and block all the trans people on Twitter. Okay. Uh, and not for a reason that you would expect. Okay. I, I had to learn a word today. Okay. Because of, of uh, an argument two trans people had in my, in my comment section. Okay. One trans girl called another trans girl. And I kid you not. And I quote a gigapassoid. And I had to Google what that was. And all I could do was just do that thing where I pinch my nose. And then they went back and forth calling each other the F slur for a while. And I had to ban them both from my comment section. <laughs> I wanted to tweet that joke about me having to block all trans people because of that interaction. But I, I knew I couldn't tweet that. I knew I had to make the joke on stream for that, for the context to make sure I didn't get memed. But, but yeah, uh... Fucking Giga Passoid, Jesus. I learn something new every day. Died in the hundreds of thousands. Men commit suicide more. Men work more than dangerous jobs. You know, if somebody broke in this place right now, who are they gonna expect to defend? Everybody in here is gonna be the men. If your family fails, they're not looking at your wife. They're not, they're looking at the man. You know, I just want people to understand that there's, 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 there's some advantages that men have, and then also men do struggle in custody and all kinds of different no, things. 100%. Basically, I think a Giga Passoid is a girl that's like a trans girl that's unclockable, I guess. I 100% agree with you as a man now, right? But I think my perception of it is different than yours because you were born male, you were raised male, you have a whole other space in that. And I totally respect your opinion on that. And I believe that that is a true lived experience as a born man. Yeah, and let me add with the black man because yeah. we have a different, a total different reality in it. I don't, in, in no way, form or fashion do I Put go into Put it back in the like deck, buddy. I think I command presence when I go into Put it back in the deck. Come on. You can put it back in the deck. We knew you were going to do it, but you can put the race card back in the deck room because the way I'm dressed and I'm tall. I go in the streets. I've never had a person cross the street. I've never been attacked by a police officer. I was a police officer. You know, I've been pulled over probably three times in, in my entire life. I mean, my biggest question with this and why I don't necessarily agree with it is because when it comes to privilege, there's not really a way to quantify it. It's very subjective. Um, so like your version of male privilege and your version of male privilege are very different. So it's, it's hard to see the other side because you never lived it. Yeah. The difference between you and us is we see it because we've lived it. You have not. So it's easy to speak and be like, well, it doesn't exist. Well, how would you know? Well, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I, I think everybody has certain privileges, but what I think the question here is what defines male privilege over women? Because women have privileges too. Right. So is there a graph that you guys are calculating to make men have more than women or what? The privilege is not acknowledging what you have that comes so easy. So do you think that your fear, because you live both sides, right. do you think your fear is something that you have in your mind or you think no. it's a reality? Because no. No, let me say this, you never, you, you never really like a person. beavis and butthead character. Right, exactly. So you have the same physical capabilities that you did no. when you were one. No, not, no. You, you my, no, my strength is entirely different. Well, uh, what what percentage would you say? Uh, uh, more than 100%. Okay, I weigh so, like 100 pounds, now you're still, now still not probably as strong as me. But it's not about strength. It's that or women are targeted. Men are not targeted. I mean, maybe sometimes. I'm not saying it's never they, they're happen. targeted by other men. I'm right, right. But women are targeted by, by other men. men. Yeah, I think women yeah, have less of a safe space. That's I disagree. Men, men don't have a safe space. Yeah, but like, that's true. But it's because men tend to be less careful. And they tend to be the victim of like violent and uh, like more so like theft and muggings. Women are exponentially more likely to be the victim of rapes, you know? So like the the rape the, the the getting creeped on in rape scenario is like the scary thing. There are certain societal phenomena that you have to account for, despite the fact that they're not statistically si significant, right? Like serial killers are not a, a, a statistically significant concern to have, and yet we care about them and we make our media about them because the concept of a serial killer is so frightening, and it is a there is a non-existent chance, you know, there is there isn't a non-existent chance that you'll be killed by a serial killer with no cause or means, you know, they just, you know, maybe you leave your window open in the middle of the night and they creep into your bedroom, you know, your bedroom and just stab you to death in your sleep and you never wake up that morning. It could happen, you know, and you listen to, to you know, movies and videos about that kind of stuff and it encourages that fear, right? In that same way, um, there's a lot of fear about mass shootings. They're, you know... They're, they're, they're statistically quite common here in America, but not actually like so common that you should be scared going into school every day. But people still are. A lot of people still are. Space. If you go to certain but I'm talking about hell, planes, I'm terrified of flying on planes, but they're safer to be in a car. Being on a commercial airline is literally one of the safest places you can be, especially as far as transport goes. And yet I'm terrified the whole time. And a lot of people are 
because, you know, just because you're statistically safer, you know, doesn't mean that you're not scared because human emotion is uh, not a logical thing. We're not a uh, we're not. What are they called? Vulcans? We're not literally Vulcans. We're humans. Dean Winchester is scared of flying in planes. Oh, you watch Supernatural. I forgot. That's fucking based. Yeah, we love Supernatural here. OK, Lonnie's never seen it, but I'm going to make her watch it one day. I think she'll like it. They get murdered by okay, the city. We're talking about everyday life. Yeah, everyday life. Have, have you ever been attacked as a woman? I have. I have been, right. <laughs> I've been raped. I've been attacked. I've been, I can go on and Jesus. on. I was homeless, living in the streets, raped all the time. It, it happens. It's a real thing. I didn't see the guys on the street getting raped. But you well, go men do get raped, though. 100%. Right. But, but the experience of you get we got, down we the got dark. Like, I mean, women, women say things to me when I was a police officer. Do you feel threatened? You feel empowered, though, right? No, I don't feel empowered. But do you feel scared? Do you feel threatened when a woman tackles you? No, I don't. Listen, all right, I'm going to be completely honest with you here. I'm sure women have catcalled uh, Brandon Tatum, and I don't want to minimize any discomfort he might have felt with that experience. And making this argument almost puts any progressive person into a trap because they're more or less forced to minimize the experience of one person being sexually harassed to compare to another. But they're doing that to begin with, so you kind of have to in order to argue your point. Like other Otherwise, you have to concede. Otherwise, like, it's either look like an asshole or concede. It's more or less, like, all you can do. Chill on the vape? How about you chill on my dick? Because you, you've been sucking it for a while. You know, why don't you take a break and suck on my balls for a little bit? You know, my, 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 my head could use a little bit of a break. Um, as I was saying, um, like, let's be real. When a random dude catcalls a woman on the street, it is no doubt more frightening for her than when a random woman calls out this six foot three fucking hunk hunk a lunk. All right, I, I imagine he feels significantly less threatened than a woman would in the vast majority of scenarios. Okay, Ju I'm just going to take a wild guess. I don't feel I don't feel threatened if a man right. tried to challenge. Because you have that male privilege, right? As a woman, what if a, man, what if a man was whistling at you when you're walking down the street? I've had it happen to me. I had, I had, I had gay men whistle to me. Yeah, how does that make you feel? I don't care. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, as long as you don't touch me, and we cool. Right. I, 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 you yeah. might think I'm attractive. Right. And it's I think, fine. It's cool. I, I think it. women say the same thing. As long as you're not like trying to be predatory, and I've seen it because I go to clubs with my friends who are girls, and I have to tell the men to literally leave them alone because they keep going and they're predatory and they're literally scouting out women that are drunk or whatever, not even drunk. She could say no a thousand times and they're still gonna bother her. But the minute that I say something, they stop. Women are not as strong as men and they get targeted. Sure, yes, that is a privilege that men have over women, but that doesn't mean that men have privilege because of that one situation men commit suicide way more than women do because why? hey why 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 do men commit suicide more buddy you want to you want to talk about that because if we're going to go that route trans men commit suicide I, twice no, twice right, the rate. Right, that's not i think what's important here is to distinguish the fact that yes no one is negating the fact that women get preyed on they'll never go down that road always push them on that always ask them why conservatives conservative ideology literally can't withstand questions you can win. It won't look optically like the best as like just coming out with dunks, but you can reliably win every debate with a conservative by asking questions. Just keep asking questions and eventually they'll fold and and fact check their question, their answers in real time. And eventually you'll catch them on a lie. You know, because either they have to lie, pull shit out of their ass or they just eventually have to fold and admit that, you know, man. Yeah. I don't really, yeah, I, I can't answer that question. You know, they, they'll have to fold. There's situations where, where this happens, right? Like, right. no one's going to deny that. Yeah. But we're also just trying to say that th it's not like a one-sided coin here, yeah. where there's no, pro like, men are just, you know, we just have it good and we can do whatever no, we want. Not, 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 we, can't, we, can't even, we can't even be the next Supreme Court justice. Cause <laughs> cause, you know, like, but, you know, I, again, I live as a man, so I see the difference. Yeah. I, when I said yeah. I have privilege and I walk into a room, of course, but then there's other things that are expected of me now as a man that I would never knew were expected. So would you guys me. agree that women, that there's such a thing as female privilege? Oh, sure. A hundred percent. My wife has privilege because she has me. That's right. Listen, there is female privilege. I, I, I actually believe that. Um, is it systemic? In some ways it is. White women have a, a decent amount of systemic privilege um, due to, I believe, due to some instances of, uh, of affirmative action. They favored wealthy white women um, per particularly. But yeah, there. I mean, there's certain areas, you know, like especially in dating and, and when it comes to sex, obviously women have it a little easier there. Um, maybe not in finding a good life partner. Finding a good life partner is always going to be difficult for, for everybody. But, um, I mean, in finding a partner or a sexual partner, it is always going to be easier for, uh, you know, an average looking woman than even, you know, I would say even a good looking guy. And I, I'd even push it further, but I'm trying to be generous here. I mean, these are, there are certain areas, but like at the end of the day, men hold the vast majority of the wealth. Men hold the wa vast majority of positions of power men seem to basically control the world 
outside of a very select few instances in which women have like some privilege, which should be acknowledged, I don't really see why it should act as a counter argument against the glut, not glut, would gluttony be a good term of it? Gluttony? Or the, 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 the multiplicity of, uh, of, of examples of oppression that women face in society, uh, uh, to this day. You don't have to worry about her right safety on. because I'm there. I don't believe that as a, I mean, as a man, it's like, you know, there's marketing for women owned brands. I can't, like I said, I can't be an expert for justice. Like it's, women are very much more empowered today, which I think is, yeah. I don't have a problem with them. I mean, like, good for you. But um, I, I think that the men I am, I probably have privilege because I'm, you know, six foot two ten. Like I'm, no one's uh, picking on me when I walk down the street. You know, I used to live in Chicago and uh, I used to walk home all the time at night, but like, was that smart? Probably not, but I felt a little safe because, you know, I'm not five foot hundred pounds. I'm Max, I'm 29 and I'm a conservative man. In today's society, women and men can be he looks whatever like Joe they Rogan. want to be as successful or strong or as big of a leader as they choose. So I'm just wondering in a, in a society that is so... So we're not trying to mold the systems to the extent that they're entirely uh, like equal as they stand, at least not at this moment. I mean, that's pretty unrealistic of an expectation. Maybe, maybe if that was viable, that'd be a good world to have. I don't see why not if it was, you know, doable. But as far as like our modern day society, what we argue for as like, I'm not going to call myself a feminist, but as we are, what we argue for as progressives generally is just for an expansion of rights for everybody, for individuals to be able to pave their own path as they see, see fit. To do that, we have to acknowledge that there are systems of oppression that exist outside of what's written on paper. It's not just like, oh, women can legally do all these things. You also have to consider the social pressures and how those have effects, right? Because while on paper you have all the freedom of, in the world, if deterministically your outcome is going to like 99% of the time, you know, end up being a certain outcome, do you really have freedom, right? Do women really have freedom to pursue whatever uh, field they wish if they are heavily funneled into certain fields that are not STEM related? Does that freedom really exist if they don't have realistically the same amount of access to those, um, you know, those those fields as a man would or as a young boy would growing up? Like when you look at it through a deterministic lens, no, it's not real freedom. Seemingly level, more level than ever before. Why are we transitioning to different genders to define and what are we looking for? Biology determines gender. Oh boy. So, oh boy, um, even the trans, even fuck the cuck, the cuck hand -hand. having and the our cringe take. Man comes down to every oh, fiber in our body, so whether that be DNA, chromosomes. Um, wait, I'm trying to figure out what is going on here. Are the people who sit in the right chairs, like the chairs on the right, are they taking the conservative side of it or the, the, the no side? Or is it the people sitting, the ones who agree with the statement? How does it work? I assume it's the conservative guys on the right, trans dudes on the left, and then whoever sits down are people who agree with the statement. Okay. Testosterone levels, uh, bone density, um, there's a whole bunch of different factors that go into it, and it all has to do with biology. So biology, I 100% believe in biology. Today we don't, we talk about biology being a... I, I want to say, by the way, it is really hilarious how just completely in the wrong they are. Like, I wish they would just, like, pop up, like, uh, I don't know, like a fucking American Academy of Pediatrics or, like, an American uh, fucking medical, or a a APA, what is it? American American Medical Association, AMA, I think it is, the AMA. Like, any just re reputable source on what gender is and, and whatnot, like, and it disagrees with the takes they're having here. Like, literally, the, it's not hard to find, like, reputable sources that debunk this take. I, I do feel like it's almost irresponsible to not have a little disclaimer factoid thing pop up to warn the audience. You know, also YouTube didn't even tag this video with like a thing about it. Wait, they got a little, they got a pin section for the different questions. Oh shit. Since this is already getting pretty long, let's skip to the parts that we actually find most interesting. Children should be allowed to transition. Oh fuck, this is a good one. All right, we're gonna watch this one. Should be allowed to transition. Well, I was gonna say, I find it very interesting that you and I are the only ones that stood up, especially uh -oh. since we're younger. And you should allow children to feel what they feel because I felt the way that I felt for as long as I can remember, and it's something that I cannot deny. Yeah. You know, although my mother is supportive, when I was younger, I wasn't allowed to wear boys' clothes because that wasn't right. Now I know what I'm talking about transitioning. It doesn't always have to be hormones. It's like transitioning in society, so being able to dress more masculine. Yeah. Um, I did when I was younger, but as I got into middle school, kids change. People are mean, so yeah. you know, I dressed how I went in society, so I dress like a girl, whatever, but I think that children should be allowed to express themselves in whatever way makes them feel comfortable. Yeah. Kids are struggling to be who they are, and there's more rates of suicide for trans individuals because they're 
like there's literally being laws put in place to prevent them from being who they are, and that's, that's not right. That's not right. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, so I work with children. This is where I have like the biggest problem with the trans stuff is with the children oh, because no. they people like Gilbert. Like, like, oh like, no! To stop their puberty, oh no! Oh god, this dude's name is fucking Gilbert. Oh brother. Oh no. Oh god, dude. If you hate somebody or you disagree with them and then you find out their name is Gilbert, goldfish sound and ass. Dude, do you remember the Gilbert the Goldfish commercials? Like where they got, I remember they got, like there would be like a constant arc that would continue with each commercial and you know, like a new one would come out each couple months. And there, there was like the part where they'd be stuck in like the, in the vacuum. It was like every time they released a new goldfish type, you know, a new character would come along to help them out of the situation. And it was the new goldfish type and their flavor would in some way help them, I guess. I remember there was a, an arc where they got trapped in a uh, vacuum. Dude, goldfish go hard. Those commercials were good. I hope they're still a thing. I need Xana to debate Gilbert, please, for the love of God, and everything. Listen, I'll just send Gilbert a video of me peeing into a jar and throwing it off of a bridge, okay? It's the ultimate power move. I haven't developed the prefrontal cortex yet, and you want to stop their natural puberty from occurring to affirm their gender, and then later on they regret it. I think that's um, not a good thing. See, that's why this is a loaded question, because transition can mean many things for children. Now, I totally, as a transsexual person, disagree with giving children hormone blockers, medication, surgery, but what I do... On February 22nd, 2022, Texas Governor Greg Abbott called for the medical treatments for transgender teens to be classified as child abuse. Wait, why are you showing this? Wait, why would you show this and not the, like, consensus of, of like, academic and medical, like, agreement that... Hormone blockers are safe for kids. Jubilee, why? Agree with is socially transitioning, which means what? Because I did that, okay? And I did that in the 60s and 70s. My parents dressed me like fuck. I was a boy. You know, I didn't have any problems because I just lived hey, used to call a tomboy, right? So that was totally, uh, and I went through puberty and I did all the things. I do not believe children can make those choices and I do not believe it's okay and ethical for a parent to make those choices for a child. But I do believe gender dysphoria exists in children. I had it, 100% it's there. But to give medication to a child is so unethical to me that you would actually, you're, exactly what you said, you're stunting brain growth, you're stunting all of these things. They don't have enough research on it. So I'm in agree. It's been researched for decades. Also, there's no evidence that it stunts brain growth. No strong evidence, at least. There's been, like, about as much evidence that it stunts gra uh, brain growth as much as there's evidence that the vaccine is dangerous. So take with that what you will. It, it really is just, just, they haven't done their research. They're, they're pulling these takes out of their asses. And you know how I know? It's because I've done the research and I had the same take as them once. And that take was a take based on intuition. And their opinions and their arguments are entirely appeals to intuition, okay? They want you to feel a certain way for that feeling to immediately give you a snap judgment and opinion on that issue and for you to not question that opinion or do further research to challenge it. That is what they are encouraging with this take and with this argument. He went with transitioning medically for children is not okay for me, but I do believe in a social space. When you say a social transition, mm -hmm. it's interesting to me because we can't control what happens in a social situation. That's right. That's right. So to me, and we talked about suicide rates mm -hmm. among young trans people, mm -hmm. this whole ideology is telling people to derive their value off of what somebody else is saying about them, that's what right. somebody else affirms to them. So we, we say that, you know, society is the problem and we're not allowing people to be who they are and that's why they're mm -hmm. committing suicide, but maybe it has to do with the messaging that we're sending to these kids that you derive your value from if somebody uses your correct pronoun or you derive your value if you can, no. if this person accepts you for wearing a dress. Dude. It's just, we'd like to be treated well. That's all it is. This has been how it's been this whole time. Oh, someone calling you a word upsets you so much that you have to advocate against it? Oh, like, I can, like, this guy is so stupid. I can make so many racism com comparisons here. Like, I feel like, like this guy's, well, he's a conservative, so of course he's a racist, but still. Why do you care so much that people call you the N-word? It's like, okay, obviously everyone should have the freedom to say whatever they want, but, like, we should advocate in our society for politeness, I think. I think there's a difference between outlawing impoliteness and encouraging and incentivizing politeness. And I think the latter is a good thing. Be who you are, but tell them to be empowered about it and not get that empowerment from somebody else. Right. I feel like that's really kind of inconsiderate to say that someone would take their life because of what someone else says. To somebody, that is important. To somebody, I know I have friends who their family does not use the correct pronouns and they, transition, they live in the same household. This person struggles with depression and anxiety. Could you imagine living in an environment like that where you're no longer validated? Not, well, That's coming from your own parents. But, but if you base your validation off of other people, this is a hard truth, but if your sole validation... No, you definitely have to do it. I would love to see, like, what this guy's upbringing was like. How much do you want to bet that this guy has extremely supportive parents? Or at the very least, or how much do you want to bet this guy's, like, parents just are an issue in some way? Like, because there's no, there's got to be some survivorship bias here, right? 
because you never or or he or maybe is this guy a conservative pundit is this guy like a somebody that i don't know about does this guy have like 60 or 70 thousand subs on youtube and like rake in 100k a year on patreon making conservative content that i don't know about because i always find with these jubilee videos they're bringing in these media trained people that know what they're doing when it comes to the conservative side and i i rarely recognize who they bring in for the left wing side like like the most like the only person on the left wing side i recognize here is buck angel i mean that isn't saying much is it so I, I could get people and share everything on me. I do what I want. But for everyone, that's not the case because everybody has different personalities. Right, but that doesn't make it any, that doesn't mean that. But we still, but what, you're not acknowledge, what you're not acknowledging matters. though is that in that environment, it's not supported. I'm acknowledging that. I'm okay. just saying that we're saying that for some reason, it, it, they should look for that validation from somebody when else. When you love somebody, somebody your family, you want them to. The fact that three of the conservatives are wearing suits is kind of maybe tipping me off to maybe these guys aren't just random nobodies off the streets. Focusing not on the individual, you're focusing on the people outside of that. Yeah, but the you're focusing on empowering but, that individual. But part of the person is stop tapping your fucking lapel mic. Right. Family, your friends. I get my validation from within, and then the right. right. But we're, if we're talking about children, okay. If we're child. talking, okay. I was an eight-year-old when I found out that I wasn't, I wasn't biologically male, right? I was eight when I found out that I wasn't the same as my brothers, okay. And so going through that process, I attempted suicide four times because my mother was like, "Well, you, you are a girl." When you're when you're eight and you're 12 and you don't have anyone else that is in your space, when you don't have anyone else that lives in the same house as you to tell you you're okay. Where are you supposed to go? How are you supposed to garner your own self-validation if the people that are raising you don't? Here, this is actually very heartfelt and a very good argument, but I'm actually going to interject with some stats as well. The overwhelming, like, and, and by this I mean there is no studies that argue against this. No studies and no data have been found to argue against this statement. Over a decade this has been studied, okay? With the support of a single parent or friend, just one, the rate of suicide, suicidal ideation, depression, and self-harm in trans people drops by an average of 70%. An average of 70%. It's in the 70s. I'm not, I'm not spot on, uh, to warn you guys, I'm not spot on, on on this percentage. It is in the 70s, though, I'm pretty sure. It is a significant percentage if just one family member or one close friend offers support to a trans person, especially if they're under 18. It is significant, okay? Now, you can make all sorts of prescriptive arguments about how, well, you shouldn't be affected so much by what others think of you. Yeah, sure, fine, whatever. But if we look at the way the world really works, people seem to be affected by this. It seemed like we should want to lower suicide rates. You mentioned man, men, uh, men's suicide rates before. We should want to lower suicide rates. We should want to lower the rate of, um, of uh, trans, like, depression and suicidal ideation and self-harm. I assume these are things you agree are a problem. The data suggests that things like conversion therapy and just being the gender you were assigned at birth don't fix the problem. Transitioning seems to be a safe and effective and... Uh, wholly agreed upon solution to these problems why are you holding back if not for some partisan bias you have that's blocking your judgment don't validate who you are as a father you know my duty is to raise my children the way i believe is right and if my child somehow struggles with this which is fine we'll have that conversation but Whoopee. i'm going to let it play out the way i believe it should be played out and at 18 years old you can do whatever you want to do if you don't want to wear dresses that's fine i mean just wearing if you you want to dress like a boy don't make you want to be a boy don't mean you have to be a boy my mom was a tomboy and my mom had me and my brother and she's a woman you know and she lives like that but you know you may want to dress a little different maybe a boy want to do cheerleading or something like that okay. but that don't make that don't mean you need to transition to something else so i want that to play out sometimes so my child it does. Is old enough to make that decision on their own yeah. also you have to teach your children to have balance because if you just want mommy and daddy to acquiesce to everything you want that's not reality yeah. you have to understand that mom and dad may not see me this way they love me right. i see myself this way and i disagree with how they speak to me or how they're but i love them as well i love like my son if he said that he was and i'm a christian and i don't believe in homosexuality i, I don't i respect anybody that i don't me. believe I in homosexuality you all. i love i love how like they're so fucking stupid that just their their wording of everything is so like backwards and dumb and dog whistly i don't believe in homosexuality what does that mean you don't believe in santa what, what like you don't believe that homosexuality happens I'll listen, bro. I'll I'll DM you some gay porn on Twitter in the DMs if you want. I'm I'm not. It's not my favorite pastime, but you know I'm. I, I can do that if if you want to have that statement disproved. We can do that on stream if you want me to disprove that uh, 
homosexuality isn't real. I mean, unless you need to see it happen in front of you, in which case I can find uh, maybe some people that might be able to engage in some acts in front of you. But I assure you homosexuality is real. Uh, if by you don't believe in it, you mean I'm dog whistling and I mean I'm a homophobe, but I don't want to say it because I know what it sounds like. You are actively arguing for the restriction of other people's rights. You can't argue that you are the one uh, engaging in activism for freedom. If my son came to me, it would be a struggle for me to want to go to his wedding. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. But I think that my son should understand this is the way my dad feels. I love him. This is the way I feel, and we have mutual love. And they don't mean I hate you. They just mean we disagree. And I wish that same sentiment would be, and I think it's the same on this panel. Like, it, there's no hate in any of this. Right. I love every single person on this side, and we may think of things differently, but we love each other. It can't be one-sided. I am lucky. I'm 41, and I'm a trans man. One of my greatest fears as a trans man is my life being taken from me because I'm a trans man. Transitioning in a That's black neighborhood a concern. with gang members as neighbors. Uh, they weren't having that, so the more that, that my body started to look a lot like theirs, um, I was challenged on a regular basis. I was beaten up because someone recognized me from prior to my transition. Shit. And approached me and confronted me and called me a liar and told me I was a bitch. And I, out of safety, was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they cold cocked me, and I lost the front tooth. I grew up Listen, Apillo did a really good video on homophobia and transphobia in the black community. It's really good. Go watch it. Uh, exclamation point Apillo in chat. Up with a positive father figure. That is good. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I, think it, I think for me it's, it's surprising because I would believe that a woman who, or a person who's born as a woman who now identifies as a man, didn't have a positive role model as a man and therefore they felt somewhat insecure as a woman, which makes them you know, feel a certain way and want to be a certain different person. Maybe they want to be the man that their father never was or whatever the case may be. And so it was very interesting. I, I mean, being honest, it was interesting to see pretty much the majority of, of you guys uh, come forward. That's so great. I think that's really important that you say that because I do think a lot of people probably feel that way about guys like me, right? That our fathers are, we didn't have the right upbringing. Or what. My father was amazing. I grew Why up really like a little boy. The I felt like a little boy. My parents actually raised Listen. me. And I'm 59 years old, so that was in the sixth. Listen, if they ask the question, I have a good relationship with my mom. All the conservative guys would be standing, okay? 60s and 70s when we didn't even talk about this kind of stuff, but my parents actually felt it from me. So I think that that's a misconception that people think about people like us. Any good father pushes their child to one, be, you know, feel self-love yeah. and to feel like they can be who they want, do what they want, and you know, have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? Like our, like our you know it's and, true. Um, you guys so, know. You know, it's fatherlessness or you know, having a, a missing dad is one of a pandemic on its own, and it's one that obviously I'm sure Bernie can attest to. It's, it's, it's so critical to have a father in the house because kids get lost when they don't have one, and having a father that's loving and strong and, and uh, someone you can rely on is you know, it's very why, mean to run you know, him on 1.5 speed. Uh, I had several different father figures like in my life. So it wasn't, you know, I had a dad, but then I had my grandfather and I had my uncle. You know, it takes a village to raise a child, right? But all of those different perspectives raised me as a, as a well-rounded human. Like, you know, if we take the masculinity out of it, um, just as a human, I got to see different perspectives. And so now as a father that has given birth to a child and that child being a male, right, I'm able to raise him with those same ideals that, that I'm able to, to identify because of the father figures that I had. I didn't have my father growing up. Um, he was not present in my life at all. So it showed me that some men can step up like my grandfather and my stepfather who have taken me in and showed me how to take care of myself, how to be, you know, strong and dependable. And all I've been able to do is give more love to all people that I interact with. Right. So it was really important for me to have those figures. I think this is a, a really important thing to show people that are watching this because a lot of times I feel like we can blame any issues in society or anything that arises on the generation that came before us. So any issues that arise in our society, it's like, there's not always a reason why it's happening. We just need to address the issue and solve it. I grew up with a lot of women. Um, my parents were divorced and I lived with my mom. I had my aunts, so I was raised by women, but um, my dad was there sometimes and then my stepdad took me in as his own, so I had my stepdad as a father figure. I grew up with all women yeah. as well. My mom used to tell me I have to be your mom and your dad. So like there'd be times where I got both. Like she was super sweet with me or really strict on me and like she taught the me. The abuse avant like, stereotype. Me, it taught me a lot of vulnerability. Yeah, when you were talking it to you, like, I relate to you very well. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm Jacob, I'm twenty seven years the old. Shoe fits. Trans man. So the relationship with my dad and how unsupportive he is has been a challenge for me, but it's something that I've learned to grow past. And I encourage everyone that even if you don't have a parent who is supportive to still be authentically yourself because your life is meant to be lived for you. And I think that choosing my happiness above all else has made my life that much better and I wouldn't change anything. Even Based. though he wasn't supportive, I still wouldn't have him here. Based. Listening to all your guys' points, I would definitely say, yeah, I did have a father figure. He was in the Marines and he has this very like toxic masculinity mindset. A lot of anger built up that I can definitely tell he suppressed, you know, in the Marines because that's what he was taught to do. That's what the Marines are about. He always carried that with him and I think that's what he tried to instill in me and my siblings that's at a very true. young age, which made it hard for me to be vulnerable with myself. And I just saw a lot of anger issues that were, you know, very violent sometimes. And since coming out um, as trans, I feel like he's been more willing to understand me more and trying to figure out who I am as a person. And because of that, I feel like our relationship has definitely got a lot stronger since then. Okay, I imagine if it was come home and then try to be vulnerable after suppressing so much pain and hurt for years. So it's good to hear that, you know, he's learning and kind of evolving yeah, exactly. and opening up. That's something where, you know, you guys are talking about vulnerability, right? Cat like, is meowing outside the it's, thing. There's times when in. it's good to be hard. I don't show emotion as much as I'd like. 
I definitely have sensed um, and noticed since transitioning that being on testosterone has made me cry less, which is very interesting because I believe that before I transitioned and started taking testosterone, I feel like not being able to cry as much, it makes me feel like, I'm like, damn, I wish I could cry right now, but it's not gonna happen. I'm Gibby and I'm a trans man. Gibby? Before transitioning, I, I guess no, but okay, as, that's okay. Hold on. Fucking based. Fucking based. Cause you know he picked his own name and he was like, yeah, fucking Gibby. The biggest Chad from iCarly. You know he named himself after Gibby from iCarly. The, the age the, the age range, it, it fits, okay? What a Chad. What a fucking Chad. I just heard jet noises and shit my pants. Hey, listen. If you're not doing that once a year, if you don't shit yourself once a year, you're not challenging yourself enough. And you're a fucking pussy. Lesbian, but since transitioning, I've been able to be more comfortable with my sexuality. Um, I've definitely seen on like dating apps and stuff, a lot of conservative Giga men. Chad fetishizing trans individuals. And it's interesting because a lot of the time they say that they don't identify as um, gay or, you know, within the community and yet they're fetishizing um, my community. So I don't know about you guys, but I always speak my mind. If I feel a certain way, I'll tell somebody and that probably cost me a lot of relationships, but uh, that's just how I am, <laughs> so. I don't think there's anything wrong. With, I know we talked about vulnerability, you know, a long time ago. I don't think there's anything wrong with being vulnerable. I think, like we said, there's times and places for knowing when it's okay to be vulnerable and being self-aware of that. And then, you know, being strong when you need to and, and being um, sad, you know, when it's appropriate. But I, I certainly am not as vulnerable or not as emotional as probably I should, just because it's not something that I always do growing up. But I, I don't I like agree I with this. I'm not as emotional as I, as I like, probably yeah, should be. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's great you look at, at, at it. At least not in a positive way. I mean, for me, like my personal experiences, like because I was one, you know, to transition at a very young age and my dad being in the military, um, being a veteran, he would see me being vulnerable at times and he'd be like, well, don't you want to be a man? And that would make me feel like, oh, am I not supposed at to be At least vulnerable? once now a year, we jerky. Amazing name, by the way. And it was just like very hard for me because like I said earlier, it was hard for me to have that father figure at that time of my life. You know, my process of, you know, digesting emotions is by myself and I use that time to self-reflect. So if I'm feeling angry or if I'm, you know, feeling really passionate about something or whatever the emotion is, sometimes I pull back and I don't show that emotion because I'm reflecting on it and trying to understand why it's there. So I think a lot of times people can think men aren't showing enough emotion, but in reality, they're just self-assessing why that emotion is there in order to see what it's, what it's trying to teach us. Right, I, th I think for, for my, when I was female, I was much more angry. I was just reactive, angry, like, Arr. and then as I became a man, I soak, I cry more now as a man than I ever did as a woman. And I'm like, I think it's because I'm at peace with myself. And so before I was okay. just so angry about being a woman and everyone calling me she and seeing a girl and I just be, and I was a fashion model. So that really just took it to a whole other level. And then once I became a man, it was like, whoa, I can actually relax. And I think I do the same thing. I self-reflect on myself. I don't, I want to be this type of man that is more vulnerable and that is more uh, accessing my own emotions. It's so bizarre seeing him jump between saying he's a man and he's not a real biological man, like constantly, it, like back and forth. It's very jarring. It's like, cause, cause he, he holds the position that he's valid as a man and he ought to be treated as such but he doesn't hold the more radical position that gender and sex aren't the same thing. And so as far as gender goes, he's just as much of a man as a cis man, maybe not biologically or as far as biological sex goes, but as far as maybe actually, well, in most as far as much as it matters up to the point of genitals, really, and some internal sexual organs, Buck Angel is pretty like, if we looked at sexual dimorphism, you'd probably say, yeah, it's a dude, like for most of them, like like even then, right? It's really bizarre how he reconciles these two positions that don't really fit. Like, like, like he needs to adopt the more progressive position that sex and gender aren't the same thing for his current position to even be defendable. And, and I can see he's struggling to, f to defend his position in this debate thing because he doesn't have the same position as us. Us based lefties. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. That's cool. That's cool. We did it, chat. We survived. We survived, chat. We didn't die of cringe, which is quite common with Jubilee videos. God damn, 7.04 million subscribers on Jubilee's YouTube channel. That is horrifying, frankly, because they really need to start more responsibly platforming these ideas. Anyway, if you enjoyed this segment, please consider leaving a like both on the stream and on the video when it goes up on a segment. It helps out the video, the channel, and me a lot more than you even realize. Just hitting the like button. It takes half a second. Do it right now. It really does help. Seriously, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And of course, if you want to follow my social media, it's all linked down below, including my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and my fan Discord. And of course, if you want to support me financially, you can always donate, subscribe, or gift a sub over on my website. You can super chat, gift a sub, or become a channel member over on YouTube. 
um, as well as uh, I believe you can donate through Streamlabs and pledge me on Patreon. I do have really exciting plans for the Patreon coming up. In fact, maybe today, since I do have the day off and maybe uh, Balth and Ethan will be up for it. I mean, not the day off. I'm going to be free for the day after stream. Uh, maybe I'll record the first uh, thing of it, but I want to both. I'm going to be doing a thing with my mom where I have her watch all the MCU movies. She's never watched an MCU movie except for Spider-Man No Way Home. And so I want to make her watch them all in order, record our reactions to it, and set up one of those things where you have to like queue up your legal copy with our reaction. And uh, it would be like accessible on Patreon. And you guys could pay to see like me, my mom's re me with my mom and her reacting to Marvel movies for the first time. But what I want to record today and start getting to work, uh, getting working on is um and this could be a good use for the only zans channel would be me ethan and balthazar triple commentating a reaction to all of adventure time uh we'd have to do it obviously in segments and whatnot but it's one of my favorite childhood shows and uh, uh ethan hasn't seen it in a long time and uh balthazar has never seen it you want it on this a uh, pillow you want it on this shit a pillow you would be down to be in a bit, a few bits of it. Yeah, maybe we'll bring you in for some of it. So consider pledging to me on Patreon, uh, so you get access to that as soon as it goes live. That will be down in the description. No matter how you support me, though, I really do appreciate it. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a good one.